Hello everyone. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have heard a lot of uh, discussions, presentations about uh, other components in MySQL. Now let's talk about queries. So I'll, I'll cover uh, the, the new features that we have implemented in the MySQL data optimizer. <clears throat> Obviously it's not, a, uh, I mean we don't have time, 20 minutes is not a time to cover all the features, so I have selected a few of them. So let's let's start with that. Now this is the same power statement which says that whatever I say, you cannot sue Oracle based on that. So, <laughs> so this basically says that. So let's just take some time to get a glimpse of it and move on to the next slide. So, so apart from my colleagues, my colleagues and uh, whoever has worked with Optimizer, so rest of the folks. Have you heard about the optimizer in MySQL? Have you worked on any of the optimizer features in MySQL as such? I work on profiling. Okay, that's different. Uh, not on the core of it. Okay, so yeah, so I was expecting this uh, based on my previous experiences in Bosch ECS, so I thought I'll just do a small recap of the basics that you can cover in the optimizer. So I took this example from one of the uh, blogs of Morgan Docker. So he explains optimizer as a map navigation system. So what is it? It's, it's, it's similar to something like this. So you have a source, you have a destination, and you want to reach your destination in the best possible way. So this is similar to what optimizer does in my skin. So it finds out the best possible way to execute it very well. And so it's, it's similar to this map navigation system that we use in our day-to-day -day activities, wherever you go, wherever you want to find something else. So it's, it's exactly similar to that. So here is a small example. Like I have a query which joins two tables, and it finds out the city count of the number of cities in India. So how does the optimizer do that? So so here is what the query optimizer does. So for each of the queries or the tables that are involved in the queries, the optimizer tries to collect the statistics and the metadata of those tables. So without that, it cannot find out the exact way, to the best possible way to execute the query. Now what it does after getting those statistics is it generates a query execution plan. I mean, it might generate a lot of query execution plans based on the statistics that it gets, but the one that it chooses is the best possible plan to execute the query. So that's that's so so that's how the optimizer works. So that's so we, we we call the optimizer as the heart of a database. So it, it's basically what helps us. So at the end of the day, all the DBAs, the application developers, all you are bothered about is queries. How fast is my query performing? How, how, what are the features that I can use inside the query and stuff like that? So, so this is what the optimizer helps us in doing that. And at the end, it gives you the results. So it shows the count of all the cities in India. So, uh, so, so this is this is basically the job of the optimizer. Looks easy, but it is not. It's it's. It's a very, very complicated module in MySQL, which takes care of all the things that we see. And we never believe that, OK, this can be done. So so yeah, so when, when, when you work with MySQL optimizer, you get to know about a few of the terms that we use. So the first is the cost. So every query has a cost involved in it. And what the optimizer does is, it calculates the costs of executing that query, and it brings out the plan with a minimum cost. So, so what is the cost? It's a logical unit that represents the resource usage for executing that query. Next comes the explain plan. So the explain plan shows you the different ways that the optimizer is going to execute the queries. What is it going to do? Which tables it is going to join? What is the join order? What are the indexes that is it's going to use? So all those all those data can be found out from the explain plan. Now to get those data, 
you need to have some information about the tables, the columns that are part of the query. So that information is achieved from the metadata and statistics of the table. So the metadata should say you the information about the table, like what are the number of indexes that are there, what is the nullability of the column, stuff like that. And the statistics says you about the size of the table, the cardinality of columns, etc. So these two are the very, very important things that you need to generate the best possible. Now, sometimes that may not happen. The reason, the basic reason is because you may not have the exact or the, or the updated statistics of a table. So you might have come across many of the blogs or many of the scenarios where the DBA says that, OK, my query is not performing well. My query is getting slowed down. And this basically, basically most of the time, the reason is because you may not have. The first thing that we say is maybe you may not have the updated statistics about the table information in your database. So, so these four things are the ones that are going to help you generate the best possible query execution. Yeah. So, so I've covered the optimizer basics, and so I'll also I'll, I'll cover like the three things that I've decided to speak about is the index improvements, the optimizer hint improvements, and something called as the internal table story. So, let's go about. Uh, looking at the index improvements, that's there. So I picked up this schema. Uh, this is a WorldX database schema which has the JSON columns. In this, this is freely available. You can use it. You can download it and you can use it in your, uh, I mean, like in your projects or whatever you want. So, so I picked up this schema because this will give you a good idea about what the problem that I'm going to uh, discuss and the solution that we have as to how we have implemented the solution and the optimized. So let's talk about functional index. So what is a functional index? Uh, has anyone worked in Oracle or any other RDBMS? So you must must be knowing about functional index. OK, fine. So and who all knows about indexes in as such? Not you guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> indexes? Yeah, so you know about indexes, right? So create an index on a column. But here, what we're doing is we're creating an index where at least one of the index part is a function instead of a column. So you can have a function defined on, on uh, 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 I mean, the index, the index is created on a function, basically here. Yeah. And um, the way to do it is just like any other syntaxes that you have, create index, alter, table, and then delete index. So I'll take an example where I'm then going to find out the population of a city table based on certain range condition. So this is my problem statement. I have this schema, which is this. And I'm going to find out uh, the population of cities in the city table based on certain ranges. So what I do is I create an index on the city table. Where I'm using a JSON function or a JSON extract to extract the population data out of the, uh, the column in that table. Now, the details of the JSON functions and the JSON scale, uh, data, data type is going to be covered by Chaitra in the next session. So, so I'll just not go into that. But this is a function which can extract the information out of a JSON column. And what I do next is I create this index on this table. So you see this hide one index is created. And I do this. So my query is select info from city. And you see that I am using the same function. And then what I'm doing is I'm giving a range of 300 to 500. So this is just a small example to show you as to how this works. I mean, this is how you're going to use this function in your uh, in your query. So similarly, you can you can have a lot of complicated stuff defined inside a function, and then you can use that as a query, and it will it will show you the <coughs> population of info or the population of uh, within that certain range of 300 to 500. So so this is this is what 
is a function of index in a nutshell. Now, yeah, so if you look at the explained plan, I was talking about the explained, so if you look at the explained plan, it clearly says that it is using that index. So possible keys are I1 and the key is using to execute that way is I1. So this is a way of finding out if your index is being used by the optimizer or not. So you can explain the query and it will show you the output. If you look at it, you know, once, uh, once, once you have created the index, now you have to, I mean, you can see what are all the indexes created in your table. So show indexes shows you all the indexes that are created in the table. I have just removed the other index part and I'm just showing you the index part from the, so what type of index it created for the functional index? It created a weekly index and this is the expression that you use. So whenever you're creating a functional index, if you do a show index from city and you go to the that particular index definition, it will show you the exact expression that is being used as uh, for for creating that index. So this is this is what I mean. This is how you can figure out what are all the indexes that are created. Okay, so yeah, that, that that was that was all about functional index that I wanted to cover. You can you can find more information about this in the MySQL docs. So let me move to the next <coughs> index improvements that has been implemented in uh, 8.2. Uh, this is yeah, this is this is uh, this is a uh, this I, I picked up this because this was contributed by one of our uh, I mean this is contributed by Facebook and we have. We have picked up this uh, their implementation and we have used it. So this is this is a way of skipping uh, index scan. Sorry, skipping the skip. Uh, uh, yeah, index skip scan. So whenever you have a multi-column index, like if you have a column uh, index defined on multiple columns, and uh, you have something like the index is defined on A, B, C, but your query is like select star from T1 where B is less than three. So what previously used to happen was that. Uh, it used to uh, scan the whole index while uh, executing the query. Now, this improvement is what it will do is it will, it will not scan the whole index, but it will skip the scan of the whole index. And uh, this is useful only when the condition is not on the first part of the index. So, if you have select star from T1 where C is less than 3, so it's going to use this, this feature. So this was used by uh, this. This was a patch by Facebook, and uh, we have implemented this patch uh, from them. Okay. Now uh, the next uh, topic that I wanted to discuss about is uh, regarding the optimizer hints. So uh, there were a lot of uh, I mean hints were basically there in optimizer from a long time back. But in 8.2, we have started implementing a lot of other hints in the optimizer. So these are the set of hints that we have implemented in uh, 8.0. Like there are join order hints, then there's hints for setting the system variables, uh, hints for uh, views and derived tables for merge and no merge, and then we have hints for uh, index merges also. So I'll just go through each of them briefly. Okay, so join order hints is basically uh, so if you if let's say that you have a query which was performing well and after certain uh, uh, let's say let's say after certain something has happened because of which your query is not uh, not 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 performing well and you see that the join order has changed so the way you can force to use the same join order is by using this hint so you can just mention that. Uh, join order which table you want to uh, join first and then you can mention this and you can see that the explain of the statement shows that it's it's joining on that order that it was previously using. Similarly, we can use this index merge hints for uh, merging indexes 
on on tables, and you can use it using this uh, this kind of like the indexes. You can specify that you want to merge, and so it, it can you can merge those from multiple rate scans onto a single table. Okay, so session variable hits. So uh, there are a lot of session variables or variables in MySQL that you can basically use uh, for improving the performance of a query. But uh, so what used to happen was like if you set the uh, variables for a particular session, it used to persist for that session. Now it may not happen. It may happen that uh, the next query that comes does not require that variable to be set. So what you can do is you can basically set the variable for that exact query, and this is how you do it. So you set the uh, foreign key checks for inserts because insert might take a lot of time. You can uh, specify a sort buffer size for a particular query. So this this helps you. This helps you to uh, have that session set for that particular query, not for the whole session or for the whole global session. As such. So this is the set bar. Uh, uh, query uh, op optimizer chain that we have provided in 8.2. Okay, so now moving on to the internal temp table. I, I I thought Colin was talking about the internal temp table storage engine in the body. So, uh, so previously uh, for certain optimizer queries or uh, MySQL queries, we need to use this uh, internal temporary tables for sorting is one of the examples. Now, we used to use the memory engine previously. And so now, what we have come up with this is the internal time table storage engine. Now, this this was introduced in 8.2.2. And uh, this is not something that the user can create. This is being created, uh, I, I mean, user, user don't need I mean, you don't need any user interaction for using this feature. This is some. This is something that is used by Optimizer, and uh, it's created on the fly. Now, it, it's 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 based on the memory that you have. So, if the uh, the internal temp table storage engine memory exceeds, it can overflow into the disk, and and that's how so uh, it works. So, it's used basically for complex queries like CPs. Common table expressions. Then you give a distinct plus order band. There are a bunch of other uh, query types that would use this feature. Um, it's there in MySQL documentation. But this was this is the this is the internal temp table which was introduced. Now the improvements that we have in the latest features of uh, latest versions of 8.0 is that it now supports JSON texts, block, and geometry data types. So this, these are the improvements that it has and it, it, it supports overflow to disk, and there's basically no overhead when it comes to uh, converting from uh, you know deep mass and when the table becomes too big. So it, it internally converts it into the disk basically in a node. So there's no overhead in that. So this is this is the improvements for uh, internal temp tables, and uh, so there are certain uh, uh, limitations. So, so basically, there are certain variables by which you can control the uh, the, the size of the temp table. And uh, as Mike mentioned in his performance schema improvements, so uh, you can you can monitor the usage of uh, memory and disk usage with the performance schema uh, tables that you have for internal temp tables. <laughs> So we did some uh, benchmarking um, on, on the JSON variant of suspension tests when it uses internet tables. And uh, we, we see a lot of uh, more throughput. So, so suspension is one of the internal uh, performance tests that we have. And uh, a move, whenever we have to benchmark anything, that's basically the thing that we, we do it from our side. So, so what we have done is we have done this suspension test, uh, and then we have found out that uh, the internal temp table is faster than the uh, uh, internal temp tables that we had previously. 
So, and this is there in the uh, MySQL Server Team blog, so you can you can read about this uh, this benchmarking that we have done. Okay, so yeah, so I'm done with the last slide. So, if you have any questions, I can take it up now, or you can catch me. Yeah. Temporary table space? No. The, so basically, these are internal table tables, which uh, kind of like uh, it's like a staging table. That's that holds the uh, the temporary data when you are doing some complex queries like so sorting. sorting. Exactly. But table spaces is. You are talking about table spaces. Okay, then maybe you can this it. Yeah. Oh, you so said table spaces, so I was thinking like. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much, and uh, uh, the next session, Chetra. Thank you.